I'm Harvey Fletcher. Fuck. Ow, hello. In my second year oh. of university, I was diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome. Due to a stressful period, the undiagnosed tics that I had suffered from throughout my childhood exploded. A year on, I've decided to make something that might help others like me. This is Tick Attack. I was sat right here at my desk one evening last year when I first noticed my head start jerking to the side like this. And all I could think was, what's happening to me? Hmm, so, bitches. what exactly really are ticks? So they're like completely involuntary movements or sounds or phrases and like are most commonly associated with Tourette's, but you can have ticks and not have Tourette's, which I think a lot of people don't know. Yeah. According to the CDC, there are three recognised tick disorders, usually developed in childhood, more common in males, and associated with an urge prior to the tick. Provisional, where motor or verbal tics are present for less than a year. Persistent, where motor or verbal tics are consistent for longer than a year. And finally, Tourette's syndrome, which includes a range of motor and verbal tics, which again, must be present for over a year. Tics are also associated with other disorders, such as anxiety or FND. These are called functional tics, usually developed in teenage years or adulthood, more common in females, and not associated with an urge prior to the tic. These are what Tilly is believed to be suffering from. I think another thing that I want, like, I want more people to know is that tics that are just, not like just, but twitches or anything, like it doesn't mean that any of them are easier than the others. It invalidates yeah, people exactly. who have motor tics or persistent yeah. uh, tics and Ooh, yeah, yeah, it's important that all tics are given the recognition yeah, they exactly. need and people with all types of tics are given the support they need. I received my diagnosis within two weeks of my tics worsening from a specialist who was able to work out that they'd been present for most of my childhood. But for others, it's not always that simple. Well, the first started in like February, late January. Last year? Yeah, and we didn't, my mum was trying to find people because we were around doctors, couldn't do anything. We were around other places, specialist places. My mum managed to find someone who interviewed me and then got me an appointment. I'm down in London and that's how I finally got everything resolved. So how long was that from first ticks to actually getting a diagnosis. February to December. It's a long time. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons where you'd want to get diagnosed as soon as possible because you just, you, you want to, as long as you have a tile on it, you feel comfortable a lot more. But when you don't, you just, you... It's, it's constant anxiety. Yeah, it is. And when so many people have had the same... After hearing how frustrating Edie found her diagnosis, I decided to go down to London to find out why it can be such a difficult process. I think it's because of the, the expertise of the individuals that are seeing people. So there are doctors who do see Tourette's, but they don't see them with great frequency or specialise in the assessment and management. So it's sort of super specialised, really, when there's no reason for it to be. It's just the capacity of the NHS to be able to cope with it. While it's up to health services to offer better support and clarification, what can the rest of us do to make life easier for people like me, Edie and Tilly? Join me next time to find out. Be sure to head over to the website or Instagram for additional interviews, advice and information.